All right, let's talk about the latest engine. Latest two-stroke, land speed, RD400, RZ case engine. So this year is a little bit of a trying year. Um, I ended up breaking, let me show you, ended up breaking a connecting rod. I made a pass at, in fact, I, I've got a video of it, and you can hear how good this the, that ran. Uh, even though it was a phone video, it, you can still hear it. It ran just beautiful, and it was a 141 mile an hour pass. I geared a little bit too tall, and it wouldn't pull into the power in six gear. So I thought, okay, this is this is solid. I gear down a tooth in the back in the rear, shift a little bit quicker, going from fifth to sixth, which is a small jump. And if I drop out too far, I can't get it back into the power. I thought, okay, this is solid. Went out, changed the gearing, went out, and snapola. Now, uh, when I made these, and I made this crank, uh, what, four, five years ago? And the connecting rods, I think, you know, and I got four years of hard running out of this, so there's no complaints here. But I think that the next batch of rods... I'll end up with great big fat radiuses here instead of the smaller radiuses because it ended up fatiguing and cracking right in that radius on that rod. I mean, that, it's all, of course, not there anymore um, because it's broken and it fucking chainsawed the, the motor pretty good. It was kind of a panic getting it all back together. And then I, I just never, it just was never right after that. But anyway, it's about time to remake uh, crankshafts. Crankshafts, I made the crankshafts, as you've seen that two-stroke world um, thread on the first time I made the crankshafts. I made them because they needed to be kind of the fit in the RZ case, which is a little bit smaller than the RD400, but have the RD stroke, which is 62 millimeters. Uh, just because I know that port timing works right. So I ended up making all these, which they w w work perfect. So I made three sets of connecting rods. I made the one with the 120 uh, center to center rod distance. And this is the only one. So it's time to remake them. And I think I'm going to experiment with even going with a longer rod. Maybe even play with doing like a 140 rod or something. I mean, I've got plenty of room on the underside of the piston dome to fit that longer rod in. So I think I'm going to play with that. But that's another project that I don't have time for this year. I think. I mean, we've got to maybe finish off next year with the last crank and, and uh, the assembly that's in the engine that we've got. Okay, so back to, to the engine. So here is the engine. Now, one of the cool features I did with this was the super thin liner. So it's a cast iron liner. It's, uh, Durabar uh, is the, the company that does this cast, uh, cast iron, um, and it works awesome. Now, I wasn't sure, because it's only one millimeter thick, if it would withstand the abuse and if it would just kind of come apart. It didn't. It worked great. You can see the heat coming from the exhaust because there is no aluminum backing on the between the auxiliary and the main exhaust. Uh, now, with the, the captured ring that we're doing with the new piston, I think I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't know. It may work. It may not. It may just not make it at all, but I, I, I'm hoping that it will, and I'm hoping that it then doesn't create this huge weak spot. I don't know. We're going to go cut some shit apart and see if we can break some stuff. But one of the cool things about uh, this, the liner, is that I'm able to seal the water. So I O-ring here, I O-ring around here, and it it seals that water passage, which works really well. Um, the idea behind the thin liner is, and if you watch the last video, uh, Nicosil is the ultimate way to do this. But there's the, the compromise of if you have a failure, if you have something happen, and having one cylinder, it, it puts me out for the year. So 
and going back to land speed racing is you only have a really tiny window and if something goes wrong during that time you're screwed until the next year um, and so the, the thought process was is to do this thin liner and then it would retain less heat because you don't have this big massive line you know liner and it's almost a press fit so it's it's not uh, it's not actual hand fit, but I think that with a little with a, a rubber mallet out on the salt in an emergency, if I needed to replace a liner, I could get away with it. Would it really work? I, I hope that I never have to find out because I'm not sure how close the bore would be after pulling one out and putting it back in. I don't know if if the bore would stay very round. I think in an emergency, and that was my thought behind doing it, I, I could get away with it. But really, ultimately, and I luckily I've never had to do it, they, I press them in, I bore them, you know, they're on my fixture, so they're all torqued correctly, and they come out really nice and, and round. If you look at the, the wear pattern, it wears just perfect all the way around. It really is, it works very, very slick. Um, maybe this year, because I've got to remake this, um, maybe I'll go back to, you know, I have a thought about still utilizing the coolant passages, but maybe making a really thick, fat uh, aluminum liner with Nicosil. Same idea, but then if I do ruin a, a, a sleeve or I do ruin, get a chip or a, a problem with the Nicosil liner, all I have to do is replace the sleeve. And then I get the advantage of, of not retaining all the heat through the transfers, which is the bad part about the iron liner. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough time this year. I've got so much on my plate this year, I'm just not sure I'm gonna get a chance to do it, but that is long-term. It might be for next year to get that done. Um, one of the, the, the cool things about this particular cylinder is it makes great power. And I'm not, I don't want to even tell you what the horsepower is because then we devolve this conversation into, well, on this and the this and then my buddy made this and, and we put bu bubble gum in something and it made 47 million horsepower. I don't really care. I tune for my own stuff so all I'm concerned about is what I do. But it makes world class power. The problem is, is when I get into the upper RPM, uh, upper gear ranges, fifth and sixth, it won't pull. And I think, and this was, and I've been running this for what, three years now or four years? And the first couple of years, I, I thought, I, I thought that, and, and I thought, well, maybe I am running out of gas. And so I monkeyed around with making sure I had enough flow through the carburetors, enough fuel flow. And I were running great big 44 millimeter round slides. And then I thought, well, maybe I'm stalling the air and it, it just because it's so big. And so I went back to 36 millimeter carburetors and it improved it. And which made me think, okay, what I'm doing is I've got too much port. So going back to when I designed this, I went with as big a transfer ports. If you remember, Yamaha's 102 millimeter bore spacing is just shit, makes for shit transfers. So I thought, well, I'm going to put in as big a transfer as I possibly can, which I think was a good theory, but like Ford found out with their Boss 302 in the 70s, big is not always better. You know, flow doesn't, does it, they don't necessarily make more horsepower by having great big huge ports but if they don't flow right. And this is what I found with this. So what I ended up doing, my theory was going into the first of this season is I've got way too much transfer port and I'm stalling the air. So if you look, you can see that I filled in. Now the, the ports closest to the intake side, they're so full of intake port that they work okay. But the, the ports that are next to the exhaust side are just simply too big and so I'm stalling air. So to, to prove my theory, I filled this with epoxy. I filled all of these ports with epoxy and sure enough, it ran beautiful all the way, through, you know, to the, to the, in the top gears. So that proved my theory that my ports were too big. So my, my plan for this year is, and I've got, 
if you look at this, this is a three-piece design. So uh, across the top of the transfers is the bottom piece. This middle piece is the top of the transfers and the bottom of the exhaust port. And then the top piece is the top of the exhaust port. It was the only way I could machine that and get all the detail, all the fine detail that I wanted uh, to do that. So what I'm, my game plan is, is to remachine the bottom piece, still utilize the area that I've gained, but make a nicer transfer port, more of a, a, a teacup style transfer port. Um, Will it be great? No, it's still going to be a shit transfer. There's just no way around it, but I'm going to try and make it the best that I can and decrease the area so I can get the velocity back up to where it needs to be. So that's my game plan is to replace that. Now, hopefully I'm going to have enough time that I can, if I prove that that works and it makes good power and I'm happy with it, then I'll remake the whole entire cylinder and maybe make a, a just have a, a, it'd be nice to have a backup. To have a, 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 in fact, it'd be nice to have two complete engines. You know, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to that point. But that's my game plan for the year. The other thing I did, I think that I'm going to uh, revise is I used great big huge reeds. They were off of a Skidoo uh, 800cc uh, snowmobile engine, and I think they're just too big too. I think that I'm not doing myself any favors um, by utilizing all of all of that. I don't I don't think it's doing me any good. Um, so we've got that. We've got the intakes. Uh, the exhausts are, I think, are terrific. I'm happy with the exhaust. So we've got this, the exhaust port. We've got auxiliaries going all, if you can see that, going all the way down just as they come into a complete round. And then, of course, my, my header you know, matches up as closely as possible going out, which I've got to remake pipes this year. Um, and as you can see, the, the cooling is about the same as I showed on the last engine. It comes up around the top of the sleeve, between the aluminum and the top of the sleeve, down and around the exhaust ports, and then back up and over the top of the combustion chamber. Works slick. Um, I, I don't have big pockets of, of uh, bathtub. You know, it, it's got pretty good velocity everywhere, so it works really well. Uh, the, the coolant up between the cylinders, not a great plan. Um, and on the next version, I'm going to get rid of that and avoid that. Right now, it's just kind of a, a, a space constraint, and we're going to live with it for this engine. Um, what else are we going to cover? How about, uh, I guess that's about it. So, I bought... Throttle bodies off a of Yamaha R6. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to play with some fuel injection. I don't know that I'll end up, you know, going into race season with it. I mean, if it doesn't come out pretty flawlessly, I'm going to go back to carburetors because I know those work. And there's a lot to going to the fuel injection. I mean, I've got to, you know, I've got to put a charging system on it. And I mean, there, there's going to be, uh, it's not going to be as simple as, uh, just throwing throttle bodies on and a fuel pump in. I mean, it's really, there's going to be a lot to, to pulling this off. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. I've got the uh, electric bike that's going to be due in April that I've got to get done. Um, and, of course, the business is growing like crazy. I bought another machining center um, that will be hopefully be here uh, at the end of the week. So there, there's so much going on and so much on my plate, I'm not sure how much I'm going to get done. The pistons will get done here and, and into the motor and tested here in the next week or two. Um, so that is progressing. Um, so things are looking good. 2018 was a phenomenal year. It was, it was mind-blowingly cool. All the things that I got to do and the things that I learned, uh, I didn't have a record setting year, but I learned a lot. Um, I got to run El Mirage. I ran four events at El Mirage this year, which was just, it was our last year because it's the, the first of the year. Um, so that was really fun and I learned a lot there, even though my 
jetting is completely off when I get down there and I've got to figure out how to test, do some testing. Um, but yeah, I think that everything is looking good. I think that, that I'm looking forward to this coming year and the stuff that I, I physically have time to get done, I think is going to be really phenomenal and a lot of fun. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, 2019 is just going to be off the cuff cool. I mean, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I think that things are in really, really about as top form as could be. And I, I think we're just going to charge forward and do some really great, great things. So happy new year and thanks for watching Speed of Cheese Racing and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.